death is going to wake us up to how precious our lives are. Welcome back to Human to Human. I just got inspired to record this episode, so ignore my stuffed up cold sounding morning voice. I am currently getting over a cold, but this is an episode I've been thinking about like for so, 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 so long. And we'll see if this is the one that goes live because I've recorded an episode about grief and death before, but didn't really love it. It felt forced. I also recorded it at a time when I was in a pretty dark place because I'd recently lost someone who was close to me growing up. Um, and now it's it's been so much time that I think I've gained more perspective on it. And I have this weird theory, um, f- feel free to disagree with my theory, that, I don't know, I think by a certain age, in your 20s maybe, or even your 30s, like, there are so many different bad things that can happen in the world or traumas that you can go through and experience for example death sexual assault abuse alcoholism i could go on and on there's so many different really challenging traumas that you know also make me feel like oh my god like why have i not experienced these certain things when i know so many people who have But I have this theory that like by a certain age, I think you've experienced some kind of trauma and or there's like maybe this this big theme in your life of something that you need to overcome or learn from or deal with or confront. And it could go even deeper into like spirituality and like having a plan, a life plan before you're born. And like I'm really just skimming the surface of spirituality things because I didn't grow up spiritual or religious so I am like that's really kind of this new chapter of my life I'm embarking on is understanding what how spiritual I am and what I believe in um but for so much of my life death has actually been a really big theme for me in losing people close to me seeing my mom go through loss um and now that I'm 21, like, I recently lost someone who was very close to my age, who I knew very well growing up, and it's a really weird thing to wrap our head around, and I think as a society, we don't talk about death, we try to ignore it, um, and act like, you know, it doesn't exist, or we bury it down, and I've experienced, like, the very first big loss in my life when I was in grade eight, I was, like, 14, I really pushed down my grief and my feelings and the behaviors that were modeled around me were that were we're not going to talk about it we're not going to talk about how hurt we are we're not going to tell stories Um, once in a while we might break down but like that's it and as I've grown up and changed and also become more creative and luckily went to a high school that held a lot of space for creativity and the feelings that come up through it and and creating we would create art that actually would um have meaning have a have a big deeper concept they'd call it but it'd have a big deeper meaning that you could choose if it wanted if you wanted to have it or not but they'd always ask our teachers would ask like well what is this about what is this photography piece about and I cried in my photography class in grade 10 about the loss of my grandfather that I didn't realize I had been suppressing for like three years so that was a really big moment for me and in this episode I really want to talk about grief and death and wrapping our heads around it and what it looks like as you grow up and um months go on after someone dies um and I think I'll just start with the very early stages of grief I mean it's gonna look completely different for everyone my favorite thing I learned in the process of losing my childhood friend was I talked to my therapist really early on after I found out he passed and she said that people grieve in very different ways. Some people are doers and some people are feelers. When you're a doer, you're the kind of person who's like, okay, we are going to get some food going for the funeral. Let's plan everything. Let's figure out what we're doing for the memorial. What casket is it going to be? Or like, what can I do? I'm going to host people. I'm going to bring people together. And feelers are people who who just sit and they allow the emotions to run through their body and they really just sit in their feelings and and might even feel debilitated to doing anything they can't make decisions they can't even process what's going on and 
it's interesting. I think you can all absolutely be a combination of the two. I think I am that in some senses. Like as soon as my friend died, I was like calling people and telling them, inviting them over. Like I had friends over to my house that night that we found out so we could just be together. We have stayed in touch with some of our friends that were all close with the person who passed. And like I'm all, I'm very like organize those events or, you know, check in, see how people are doing. And, uh, and other friends are like that too. And then there's feelers who... I've, I have aspects of that as well where you just sit and you allow yourself to cry and sob and just try to understand what's going on and I remember when I was in like the deep pits of the grief this was in like November and December um I thought I was I was I was so confused and upset and like why is this a lot of the thought processes were like why is this happening to me which is like kind of weird and like a bit self-centered to think too, but I think it's normal. But I, I just feel like I've had so many people who I've lost or I know people who have lost so many people. So I'm like, why is this still happening? But it's like, it's this is life. Uh, people die. Like, this is just how it is. Like, a weekend, our lives can be taken from us at any moment. And that's scary. And we don't like to think about that. Um, and I love, like I was listening to Rachel Hollis recently. She was talking about how like, we get confused over how much time we really have and like we could have two weeks we could have 25 years or 80 years and she's like talking more in terms of hustling and slowing down and enjoying life and she was like I'm gonna bet on me having 60 years so I can slow down and I can celebrate things in the moment now you you can't wait to celebrate something when you will have the money or when you'll have the perfect house because you may never have that and it's such a reality check when someone who's 23 or even younger than that dies suddenly and I remember telling my therapist like I've I've been through so many tragic deaths like why is this happening and she was like all deaths are tragic and it's interesting because I've never experienced a death where someone was sick and we knew it was coming it was always just like boom they're gone um and it's so different how you can feel about it and how you wrap your head around it because I think when someone's sick you start grieving them while they're still here which is really weird um do I want to give an explanation of grief like I took a grief class I took a death class actually and I took it like right in the midst of when my friend passed which was so weird um but the actual definition of grief is the reaction to the death or to the loss so like we're not even talking about when someone dies we're also talking about a breakup we're talking about when you have to you know let when you're in a war and you you move somewhere different and you have to mourn the loss of what your home was um, and what your country was and what your community was. And then mourning is uh, the process by which a bereaved person integrates a loss into one's ongoing life. So I'll get into more of that in a bit. I want to talk more about the early stages right now. Um, and I had a question. I posted this so long ago, like a question of like, what do you guys want to know about grief and like the process and whatever? And someone said, what advice slash things helped ease the process? So just to give a little bit of context for my own personal experience, again, obviously it looks different for everybody. But for me, um, going back to what I was originally saying, I was in this deep pit of like, why is this happening will I ever get out of this? I would just go through phases of being shocked and being sad and being angry and being upset and being confused and reaching out to people wanting to talk and then needing to be alone. And in the first couple days, my boyfriend would FaceTime me because he was at school uh, like an hour away from my house and he never knew this person that died. And I was, I would, I would just be like, I don't know how to talk normally right now. I can't even talk about anything other than this and it's occupying my entire brain and I'm so hurt and like I knew his family growing up too so thinking about their pain it just hurt even deeper and I couldn't even go about life and like I wrote an exam or a, a quiz or something like right after I found out I got a 50 something so woohoo we passed but I was just in this shocked state and it was hard to just function. I remember some of my friends at the time said it was hard to sleep. Thank God I could sleep because I was so fucking emotionally drained at the end of the day that like I needed to just sleep. It was just so much crying um, and so many hard, hard emotions. And I remember thinking like at, at this point, I had just felt like I had really grown so much in my therapy journey and I'd gotten like all I could really get out of therapy at this point. 
And I was like, this is so unfair. Like, I'm finally healing. I finally healed. Now this happened. I'm going to go backwards. And it's like, no, I learned very quickly you don't go backwards. You carry the grief with you in a different way. And I approached his death in such a different way because I'd done so much work on myself and and done so much work on allowing myself to feel my feelings. You need to feel your feelings because I learned the hard way when I was young that they will come up in a different way if you don't let themselves come like let the feelings come up in a in a safe way where you're you know in your home or with someone you love and oftentimes I I I I don't cry unless I'm like sparked to cry so that for a lot of my life looked like being around other people and starting to have a conversation and then I was like fuck I'm crying now because my boyfriend said something specific or my friends were saying this or I was around my mom and she said this recently I was in the car and I just started crying and it was a song that reminded me of my friend that passed and like it just sparked the tears and I get very triggered even when my brother said a friend of his mom just passed away and then I just I just start thinking so deeply about how she's feeling and what it would be like to lose a parent at you know, the age of early 20s or um, my mom, like an uncle of mine passed away a couple years ago and like thinking about his kids and how young they are or his wife, like it's so easy to put yourself in the person's position of how close they are to the person who passed and everyone's experience is so different and you'll never actually fully know what they're going through unless you're close enough for them to like open up. Um, But all of this means you're an empathetic human being who cares really deeply and loves very deeply and that's a very, very beautiful thing. Um, and it's interesting at the beginning of a grief journey, I never experienced it this intensely and in where I was this present for it as this like <laughs> evolved woman I am now than who I was when I was in grade eight and, and even grade 12, um, where I was just in a fog and reflecting back on the early days of the grief, it felt like I would never, ever come out of it. And I remember my therapist saying like, these next couple weeks will be very intense um but you I don't know if she said this but like I I wouldn't I wasn't gonna live in it forever um and some days I would just cry uncontrollably like truly like just sobbing but then as it started to evolve over time some days you'd barely think about it and then there's this like weird grief around like this would was occupying my entire brain for the first three weeks after it happened like why why am i just going on with my life um okay i'm jumping i'm jumping ahead though because i want to talk about what advice and things helped ease the process specifically at the beginning um so like i said when my boyfriend would facetime me i was like i just can't even have a normal conversation about this right now like i don't or normal conversation about anything other than this And thank God him and I had been dating for, I think, like eight months by that point, which was good because I'm like, if we were like three months into our relationship, this would be like really fucked up and like so weird to navigate. But he just like one day, like a couple days after he dropped everything and he came and and he just held me and he made me feel like a human again. He made me remember what my life is right now again because I when someone dies that also isn't in your life anymore like this person I didn't talk to on a daily basis I didn't I hadn't seen him in a year so it was so weird to just be shot back into this time when I was growing up and this time when I was such a different version of myself but feels so close to home to me so when my boyfriend came to visit me I just was like oh my god you okay you're a human and you're my boyfriend and this is my life right now and he just let me sob and cry to him and he continued allowing that and just holding space for me in the coming weeks and he recently even said to me because I I cried recently about it and he was like we can always talk about it we can always talk about him and something that really helped in the early days was telling stories and sharing those experiences and reaching out to the people who knew him talking to people who understand the grief I was going through who, who were going through similar grief and and connect with the people who just knew what bright of a light he was and and when he died I was like he is so much the world feels so much dimmer without him here two months after he passed I saw his mom and actually got to have an in-depth conversation with her and 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 just talk about everything and and she's so spiritual and it really sparked I think my spiritual journey beginning because the perspectives I gained from those conversations was that like he's not fully gone his soul and his spirit is still here and I love that she was like we still talked 
a bit like we still talk like he's around people would think we're crazy and I think it's so important when someone dies in your life to cope in the ways that make sense for you to to talk about the person in ways that feel healing for you and know that you can still talk like they're around or that you feel their presence or that they give you signs because what the fuck is the point to life if when we die we're just dead and we're gone I feel like I've been able to feel a lot of the presence of people I've loved who have passed and that has been so healing and comforting for me and so you pessimists listening listening like you do what you need to do to feel okay with your life um one of the guys that I reconnected with just for like a hot brief tiny minute um who was really close with our friend that died he is like the most pessimistic person I've ever met in my entire life and just like none of like the spirituality stuff would resonate with him and it's just like if that's how you're happy living then like you do you and if none of this like resonates with someone listening then like that's totally fine figure out the ways that feel okay for you to heal and feel comfortable in who you are but I truly believe that like they're not fully gone I've never been to a medium or anything like that I would love to I'm on a wait list to talk to a medium but I do think we all like somewhat have the capability also to to receive signs from the people we love and communicate with them and understand you know deeper what it's like without them here but knowing that like they still can guide us and they can still see what we're doing which it's funny sometimes it's creepy where I'm like I don't want them to see what I'm doing all the time when I'm having sex I don't want my 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 people who have passed to see that but I don't think it works like that and I think you can make it whatever you feel you want to make it and other things that really helped at the beginning stage was asking for extensions on homework I had three papers due right when my friend passed and reaching out for support from people who also aren't grieving is very very helpful because they can hold space for you in a way that someone who's very traumatized in that time can't um and like I went and stayed with my boyfriend and uh he helped me like just write my papers like just sitting next to him and going to a university campus and like him writing papers helped me write my papers just being around that environment I know I would have never been able to do it if I was home alone um and also seeing some of my friends that also like weren't going through it I would like explain to them what this person was and what he meant to me and like just different stories about the visitation and what it's all been like. So that's really healing is to allow yourself the chance to connect deeper with those people too and be vulnerable and tell them how much pain you're in. Um, And during that time too, like eat your comfort foods, move in like small ways that feel okay, like going for a short walk. Um, And for me, going to therapy was really, really helpful too because I gained a perspective I didn't have before about how I could be feeling and what I could be you know experiencing so another question was how did you know when it was time to get moving again um this is a good question because I like that it wasn't worded as how did you know when it was time to move on because there's no such thing as moving on from a death you carry the grief with you and the grief changes and there's this really good um visual that I saw in my in my death dying and bereavement class that was about how we grow around it and grief is like this thing let's say it's like a black circle and we evolve around the grief and I think the grief can really transform and we never move on from it we never stop fully grieving we just grieve very differently and the thing about getting moving again is that like life makes you move and I actually just had a conversation with my therapist about my work life and challenges I experienced with jobs I've had in the past and I learned that like I should have asked for much more time off from my job when my friend passed than I did because I made mistakes at work after and I was so embarrassed but I knew I made mistakes because I was in such a state of shock and I just I couldn't think straight you can't think straight and that's normal and you need to ask for that time for extensions and all of that but school and life and work does force you to get moving again in some certain situations um and it's weird I learned about this in my class too that there's a lot of deaths that like work and school don't actually account for like someone who passed away who felt like a brother to you and was a brother presence in your life but not like a blood related brother or having an abortion or having a miscarriage or losing a pet um there's so many different instances where the death affects you so deeply but societally it's not like validated which is so fucked and like makes no sense (laughs) makes like people we they try to put us in boxes the people as in society so that's something that's hard and I think it's important to really 
take that time too because like death is the number one excuse to get an extension on something like truly and again you never move on you carry the grief with you and it looks different and so how it's really evolved for me is that like I remember after the first like two months I would still have moments where I would just it would come out of nowhere like and a lot of times too I would just be really like upset or in a bad bad mood or angry or sad and I like was trying so hard to pinpoint why it was and then finally I'd be like oh someone I felt like was my family for a really long time isn't here anymore and he's gone and like he was only 23 and like that that makes sense my friend died that is why I'm feeling like this and it's hard because sometimes you just you can't do anything with those emotions but feel it and another thing too is oh my god my therapist was like if you feel like cleaning a closet do it if you feel like cleaning anything do it cleaning can be very healing in a grieving process and don't question it just do it it's 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 a part of your doer need when you are in the grieving process and like wow honestly doing this podcast is very healing for me because it feels good to talk about all of this stuff and to know that it's April now and my friend passed in November and it's been so many months, but I still think about him often. And there's no reason to feel guilty about not thinking about someone who's died every single day because we need to, we are, it's so weird. Our lives just quickly adapt. We're such adaptable beings that like the next thing you know you are just functioning without this person in your life anymore and it and it's and at points it can feel like a big hole and at other points it feels so normal and like it's been so long since my grandpa was around and it feels so weird and it feels so weird to acknowledge how normal it does feel though because after the first couple years it was like okay well this is just the new way we're living or after a couple months or you know the time frame is different for everybody but there also is such thing as being stuck in early grief and that's when you don't la- allow yourself to feel everything. Like I have a family member who it's been a few years since a certain person passed away, but this person in my family is still in their first year of grief because they haven't really allowed themselves to process it and see a new way of life um, to carry that person with them and honor them even though they're gone. I think it's really important to reach out for support and therapy groups and grief groups and the people who you feel comfortable with and allow yourself to see those signs from the universe. Death is going to wake us up to how precious our lives are. And when my uncle passed uh, in the summer of 2019, I stopped being as scared of being myself and posting things I cared about and at the time this was pre-podcast days I had a blog I still have it it's on a website www.jessicajm.com it will eventually evolve into a human to human website but I finally stopped being scared of posting and being vulnerable in the way I felt was so true to me because I was like he just died I could fucking die whatever I need to do what feels right for me and wow recording this right now is also very healing for me because it reminds me that I still need to do that and I want to take the podcast full time and try and make money off of it and I had Easter this weekend and I was so scared of like telling family members that when I think we also need to give people the opportunity to surprise us and to hopefully be happy for us and something that's really challenging after someone dies is eventually people stop talking about it some people eventually the story stopped being there and I remember sitting with my family because I live with my parents at the time and I was like I'm the only one who's going to keep bringing up these stories about my friend who passed and like if I don't keep doing it like who will and there is some truth to that but keep those stories going keep being the person who keeps their memory alive or even not even talking about it just thinking about it with yourself you can really just love them still and acknowledge there's such deep love and like realizing how intense we feel when someone dies is a is a response to how deep the love was there and there's also things known there's like a there's such thing as complicated grief um and that's also similar to what I was talking about before is how society doesn't acknowledge your grief complicated grief is again grief that society doesn't acknowledge and also you might not be able to talk about Like abortion is very is very taboo and very frowned upon in certain lights, um, which is really, really sad because people who have abortion abortions, they are grieving the loss of of something. Um, Same with a stillbirth or um, uh, a miscarriage. And 
even it was there were so many interesting examples of a pet dying again but if you if you were dating someone or hooking up with someone who was having an affair or if you were having an affair and and you had this relationship that was in secret and someone passed you are not allowed to like openly mourn the death of someone that like your relationship was hidden and whatever that might you know resonate with certain people like that's really really challenging because i think when you're going through grief you need support you need to talk about it you need to have space to let your emotions be felt or else they will come up later and you will be in this early stage of grief for a long time and going along with this like intense woo feelings i have this theory too that the big personalities go hard um like people say legends die young i have had a lot of people in my life including a teacher actually when i was in grade 12 who these people i always said like about all of them and they're all men in my life who have passed actually um the like you met them once and you knew them like these people who i've known who have died you met them once and you just oh my god they were a huge energy they were a huge presence they were this huge just this presence that you could not deny and they were just so loud and so themselves and just so them in the world and a lot of them also had these secret demons that so many people never got to hear about and they died so young or they died so tragically and it makes me really in like it settles in me that if you don't heal if you don't seek the ways that allow you to process the trauma you've been through or you know the the hard coping mechanisms the negative or the unhealthy ways that you walk through the world if you don't heal that it can actually be a matter of life and death it's such a hard weird thing especially to talk about where i know like several people will listen to it and people can disagree but if you're moving so fast and you're so intense there's more likely for accidents there's more likely for things to go wrong heart attack accident car accident like just (laughs) i could go on and on we need to slow down and we need to give our bodies and our minds what we need and we need to give ourselves grace and love and compassion and be real with ourselves and be like how are we living through the world are we proud of it are we happy about it am i loving myself am i loving the space i'm in am i present i started doing yoga more often because i literally like can start to remember my days better and let all the things that i was experiencing throughout a day sink in or the emotions i had been ignoring could be felt if anyone's watching the youtube or reels my shirt looks like it turns into a (laughs) u-neck and it's not cute yeah i think i just want people to take away from this that you need to process loss in a way that that really helps you express it and and get it out and have support and lean into communities because that's what we need and one last thing that was really interesting that i learned from my class for my psychology degree was the stats of those who are grieving how many people actually experience paranormal activity that is the feeling of a presence of someone they've lost being there and and people always reported that that was actually comforting and it wasn't scary and it's very very common for people to experience a presence of someone they've lost and that's a beautiful thing because i think that means that it's real in my opinion it's real and once someone dies they're not just gone forever their spirit and their soul lives on and something else that I learned in my class was uh, people, I watched people um, talk about near-death experiences uh, just on the internet um, that my prof recommended that we watch. And it was really, really interesting that people weren't scared when they felt so close to death. They felt, they reported that it felt peaceful and painless and they had this life review where they would see all of these different humans in their life that played a big role that they loved and i've heard a few different stories about this and i think it's it 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 brings me peace to know that like it's a part of life it's a part of our cycle of life and it doesn't need to be this terrifying thing and it happens 
we will lose the people close to us or we'll die first like it's so weird and I think to myself I'm gonna be so fucking lucky if my parents are around when I have kids and I hope they will and I'm gonna put the energy into the universe that they are gonna be around for that time and know that like the times that we have we need to enjoy and love and not in a way that we're guilting or pressuring ourselves but just have this inner knowing that there is beauty in life and everyone goes through such different forms of trauma and healing it can be the most empowering experience ever it's hard it's not easy it takes a long time there's no specific timeline you you kind of never even know that there's an end date to it therapy has been the biggest component in my journey and that's why I advocate for it so much but give yourself that chance sometimes things hurt more before they get better but you got this truly if you're going through grief, listen to the signs from the universe. Allow yourself to live life in a way that feels fulfilling for you. Thank you for listening because this podcast is the most healing thing for me. I'm so glad I finally recorded this episode. I think I really needed it to be in a place uh, where I could, I don't know, relay the information calmly and know that even though it's been a lot of months since the most recent passing of someone in my life, I still think about him often and I have my breakdown moments and I said to my boyfriend recently that I was scared about my parents dying or my brother passing away on his trip and like I also hate saying that I don't want to say that on a podcast because I feel like that's putting that energy into the universe but I think it's okay to also acknowledge our fears and know that we have we we only have so so much control in our life but we need to take advantage of the control that we do have because why would you want to live a life you're not proud of when it could be taken away from you so fast? So thank you for coming to this episode. If you are grieving, eat comfort food, do what you need to do to feel good about yourself or just to feel safe and okay and to get through such a hard time. Sleep, drink water, connect with the people you love. If you liked this podcast, please feel free to recommend it to someone. Um, Again, it's just like the best thing I created for myself like two years ago when I was also going through grief because of the pandemic we globally went through deep deep grief and that could be a whole other episode thank you for being here if you want to keep up with the posts go to at human to human pod on instagram and human to human at human to human pod on tiktok and I will be back for another episode soon lots of love hug the people you love too tell them you love them seriously (laughs) 